Hello, in this episode we're going to be adding the ability to insert points along a segment as well as to right click on points to delete them. Okay, let's begin by looking at deleting points. So first of all, the idea of deleting a control point by itself doesn't really make sense, we'd never want to do that. Instead, we can only remove anchor points and then its control points will get removed along with it. So say we do want to delete this anchor point here, so this is a point with an index of 3, then we also want to delete points 2 and 4. So I can write this out as a rule, which I'll call the default case, which is to delete points i minus 1, i, and i plus 1, where i is the anchor index. Now there are of course exceptions to this default case, say for example we want to delete this first anchor point here, so this is with an index of 0. Well, for a open path, we'll want to delete its single control point, as well as the first control point of the next anchor point. So we're deleting points 0, 1, and 2. I'll write this out as the rule if i is equal to 0, and it's an open path, then delete points 0, 1, and 2. Now, what if I make this a closed path, and we again want to delete this first anchor point. Well, here it's got two control points, so it looks like this is just the default case, we just want to delete points i minus 1, i, and i plus 1. But if we do that, we end up with a problem, which is that this control point over here becomes element 0, the first point in our points list. And the reason that's an issue is in the code we're relying on the fact that the first point is always an anchor point. So what I recommend we do is before deleting any of the points, we take this last point in the list and we set its position equal to the position of the second point in the list. And then we delete the anchor point, we delete its control point, and we delete this next control point. So as a rule, this could be written as if i is equal to zero and it's a closed path, then first set the position of the last point in the list equal to the position of the second point in the list, and then delete points 0, 1, and 2. There's just one last case to deal with, which is for an open path when we want to delete the last anchor point. So in this example, that's the point with an index of 9. Here we want to delete its single control point, so that's point 8, as well as this control point here, which is point 7. So we can write this rule out as if i is equal to the last element in the list, and it's an open path, then delete points i minus 2, i minus 1, and i. Alright, so I'm going to go into the path class, and I'm going to add a new method called delete segment. This will take in an int anchor index, and if that anchor index is equal to 0, then if it's an open path, we want to delete the first three points, and if it's a closed path, we want to first set the position of the last point equal to the position of the second point, and then delete the first three points. So we can simplify that a little bit by first checking if it's a closed path, and then setting points with an index of points.count minus 1 equal to points with an index of 2, and then remove the first three points by saying points dot remove range starting at 0 with a count of 3. Alright, now if anchor index is equal to points dot count minus 1 and this is a open path then I'm going to go points dot remove range starting at anchor index minus 2 and removing the 3 after that and then the default case, points dot remove range, anchor index minus 1, removing 3. Alright, now I always want there to be at least one segment remaining, or in the case of a closed path, at least two segments remaining. So I'm going to only allow a segment to be deleted if the number of segments is greater than 2, or in the case of an open path, if the number of segments is greater than 1. Alright, so I'll enclose that all in there, and then I'll save this, and I now want to call the delete segment method from the path editor, 
when a anchor point is right clicked on. So I'm going to come into the input and in here I'll say if GUI event dot type is equal to event type dot mouse down and it is the right mouse button. So GUI event dot button is equal to one. Then I'm going to loop through all of the anchor points to determine which one is closest to the mouse. So I'll start by creating a float min distance to anchor. And I want to initialize this with some threshold value. So the mouse has to be closer than that value to an anchor for it even to be considered. So I think I hard coded the diameter of the handles as 0.1. So I'll put that in a variable later on. But for now, let me just set this to half that, so 0.05. And then I'll have an int for the closest anchor index. And I'll set that to negative one at the start. So a sort of invalid index. And then I'm going to loop through all of the points. So I less than path dot num points and I incrementing by three. So we're just catching the anchor points. I'll say float distance is equal to vector two dot distance between the mouse pos and path with an index of i. And if that distance is less than the min distance, then of course we set the min distance equal to that distance and we have a new closest anchor index. All right, so once that loop is finished, we can say that if the closest anchor index is no longer equal to negative one, then we have an anchor that we want to delete. So I'll call path dot delete segment, passing in the closest anchor index. Just before deleting that, I want to record it with the undo system. So undo dot record object, passing in the creator, and I'll call this delete segment. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but here, just like uh, when adding a segment, we don't need to request a repaint because repaints are automatically done when uh, a key or mouse is pressed. So let's just save this, go into Unity. And when that compiles, I'll shift left click to add in a bunch of points here. And then I'll try right clicking on some of these anchor points and see that those get deleted correctly. So let me make a few more. Uh, I'll turn on auto set control points. And let me toggle this closed and I'll make sure that this is working as well. And okay, once we come down to two segments, we can no longer delete. And the undo functionality is working there as well. Okay, now just as a quick side quest, I want to turn this toggle closed button into an actual toggle. I'm not sure why I made it a button before. So I'm going to go into the path script and somewhere up here, I'm going to have a public bool property. So this will be called is closed. And in the get block, I will return the is closed value. And in the set block, I'll say if is closed is not equal to the given value, then I'm going to quickly come down here to the toggle closed method, and I'm going to cut all of that stuff out of there, delete the toggle closed method, and paste that inside of here, and just set is closed equal to value. All right, I'll save that, go into the path editor, and I'll use same sort of setup here that I used for the auto set control points. So starting with bool is closed equal to GUI layout dot toggle, passing in path dot is closed and a label just called closed. And then if is closed is not equal to the path's current is closed value, then I'll record the object and then set path dot is closed equal to this local is closed value. All right, so can save that. And any moment now we should see the button replaced with a nice little close toggle. Okay, I now want to allow points to be inserted into a segment. So I'm going to come into the path class and just below the add segment method, I'm going to create a new public void called split segment, taking in a vector two for the new anchor position and an integer for the index of the segment that we're going to be inserting that point into. 
Okay, so we want to insert the anchor along with its two control points after the first control point of the segment. So I'm going to say points dot insert range, and the index will be segment index times three plus two. So that's after the first control point of that segment. Then I'm going to pass in a collection of three points for it to insert. So I'll say new vector to array open curly brackets, and for the first control point, I'll just pass in vector2.0, then I'll pass in the anchor position, and vector2.0 again for the second control point. Now, to actually set the positions of those control points, I'll say if the auto set control points is turned on, then I'll call auto set all affected control points, passing in the index of this new anchor point, which is segment index times three plus three, and then if we're not using auto set control points, we can still use one of the auto set methods to determine the initial positions of the control points, but we don't wanna use the all affected control points method since that will uh, change the control points of some of the other anchors as well. So I'll just use auto set anchor control points to just set the control points of this new anchor. So segment index times three plus three. Alright, I'll save that and go into the path editor. And up at the top here, I'm going to create a const float. And this is going to determine how close the mouse has to be to a segment for it to actually insert a point on that segment. So I'll call this perhaps something like the segment select distance threshold. And I'll give that a value maybe of 0.1. And then I'm also going to have an integer here for the index of the currently selected segment. So I'll call this selected segment index, and it'll be negative one at the start. Okay, now in the input method, just like we loop through all of these points to find the closest point to the mouse, we're going to loop through all of the segments to find the closest segment to the mouse. So I'm going to start by saying float min distance to segment is equal to the threshold distance. And then I'll have an int new selected segment index. I'll set that to negative one by default. And I'm going to loop through from i equal to naught, i less than uh, path dot number of segments, i plus plus, get a vector to array for the points in that segment. So set that equal to path dot get points in segment with the segment index i. And now we can say float distance is equal to, and we can use this handy handles utility dot distance point bezier, passing in the mouse position, and then the start end and two control points of our bezier curve. So we can get points zero, points three, then points one, then points two. And that will calculate the distance uh, from the mouse to the Bezier curve for us. And now we can just say if distance is less than the min distance to segment, then min distance to segment is equal to that distance, and the new selected segment index is equal to i. Now, the selected segment index is only ever going to change if the mouse has actually moved. So let's put this inside a if statement, checking if GUI event dot type is equal to event type dot mouse move. Okay, and then at the end of this, we'll say that if the new selected segment index is not equal to the current selected segment index, then first I'm going to set the selected segment index equal to this new one. And then I'm going to request a repaint with handle utility dot repaint. So we do need to request a repaint here because mouse move events don't automatically trigger a repaint. Okay, coming up to this uh, add segment code here, I'm going to say if the selected segment index is not equal to negative one, then instead of adding a segment, we're going to split that segment. So I'll call this split segment and make a call to the split segment method, passing in the mouse position, 
as well as the selected segment index. Otherwise, we can just add a segment as usual, but I only wanted to be able to add a segment if the path is an open path. Adding segments to a closed path doesn't make so much sense. So I'll say else if path dot is closed is false. Uh, let me just add my exclamation mark there. Uh, then that should work. So I just want to add one little graphical thing quickly, which is uh, the color of the segment when the mouse is over it. So just before I draw the Bezier curve here, I'm going to create a color called segment color. And using a ternary operator, I'll say that our if i is equal to the selected segment index, and also if shift is held down, so if event.current.shift, then I want the color to be, say, color.red, otherwise it will be color.green. And then instead of passing in color.green here, I'll pass in the segment color. All right, so let me save that, go into Unity, and let's hope that this works. So once that compiles, I'll hold down Shift, and you can see once I come within uh, 0.1 units of a segment, it highlights in red. And if I now click there, it's actually inserting a segment. Let me quickly try turning on auto set control points and adding in a couple of points here just to make sure that that's working fine. And then let me also try this with is closed turned on, and it all basically seems to be working. Now, it's currently not terribly easy to see which are the anchor points and which are the control points and so on. So I'd like to add some settings to the path creator to determine the color and size of these various handles. So I'm going to go into the path creator script and I'll create, first of all, a couple of public color variables. So this will be the anchor color. I'll set that to color.red by default. Then I'm just going to copy this a bunch of times. So I want a control color, which I'll set to color.white. I want a segment color, which I'll set to green, and a color for the segment when it is selected. And I'll set that maybe to color.yellow. All right, I then want a size for the anchors. So I'll say anchor diameter is equal to, say, 0.1, and then a float for the control diameter as well. So I'll just make that a little bit smaller, say 0.075 perhaps. And then I also want a bool to say whether or not to display the control points. And I'll set that to true by default. Then let's save that, go into the editor. And uh, I'll replace this with creator.selectedSegmentColor. And this with creator.regularSegmentColor. And then we need to change the color of the points depending on uh, whether or not it's an anchor point. So if imod3 is equal to zero, then I'll set it to creator.anchorColor, otherwise creator.controlColor, and also create a float handle size. So here, if it's an anchor point, then this will be creator.anchorDiameter. Otherwise, creator dot control diameter, and can pass in the handle size here. And now I only actually want to draw the point if either it's an anchor point, so if i mod three is equal to zero, or if uh, we are displaying control points like so. Okay, now I do just want to come up here to the input and replace this hard-coded value with creator dot uh, anchor diameter multiplied by a half. I've actually forgotten one thing, which is that when we're drawing these lines going to the control points, we only want those to be visible if we are actually drawing the control points. So I'll put that in a if statement as well, if creator dot display control points. Okay. Let me save that, go into Unity, and when this compiles, we'll get a bunch of stuff over here. So we can set the 
sizes of all of these, which is nice. And of course, we can muck around with these colors as well and decide if we want control points to be displayed or not. There's one very last problem that I'd like to resolve, which is that if we reset this path creator, then the path disappears, and if I try adding a point, we get an error here. So I'm going to come into the path creator and create a void reset, uh, which is called automatically when that uh, reset option is pressed. And here I'm simply going to call create path. Now, it's a bit of a problem in that in the path editor, this path variable won't be set to that. So I'm going to turn this variable into a property. And in the get block, it's just going to return creator.path. All right, so that just means we'll have to remove all instances of actually setting the path equal to creator.path. Uh, I think there are just two of them. So one down somewhere here. All right. And it's complaining about the naming convention here. I would just rename this to be a capital P. Okay. Let me save that. And go into Unity. And now if I reset, everything works fine. Okay, so that is actually the end of the editor part of this series. Uh, in the next two episodes, we'll be looking at two examples of actually uh, working with the curves. But yeah, that is it for now. So until then, cheers.